how are all of you this evening? Good, yeah? Well, as has already been said, the After Dark team asked me to come and talk with you today about the idea of rest. It is that time of the semester where it seems like homework is piling up, a lot of projects are due, maybe work or campus ministry or club or church responsibilities are kind of piling up. Maybe relation, relational stresses are a little higher than usual. So there is just a lot to do this time of year. There's a lot going on. And I've been feeling that way too. The last couple weeks, the emails have been piling up in my inbox. I feel like I can't quite catch up with the class I'm taking at Tori. I'm taking a Hebrew class. We have a quiz every single class period. It's kind of crazy. And there's just a lot going on too for me. In fact, about a week ago, Monday, I was, it was a day where I was running from meeting to meeting to meeting, literally trying to figure out where I could find a space to just kind of rest, even take a little bathroom break. And I sit down at my desk and I get an email from the After Dark team. And it was an email from Stephen clarifying what they hoped that um, I would talk to you guys about tonight. And this is what it said. He said, our vision for the night is to address the topic of rest coming from the angle of an unhurried lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. We think that there is a tendency at Biola to equate rest with Sabbath, so we would like to you to address it in another way. The team thought of you as a good fit, since you are a busy person, but don't give those vibes off at all and <laughs> seem at peace much of the time. <laughs> so yes, I take that as a huge compliment. Um, but I have to say, in the midst of what has been one of the most hurried and stressful times of my semester and of my year, that email did feel a little bit like an inside joke from God for me. <laughs> because while somehow his spirit is perhaps working, this vibe of peacefulness, you know, coming from my heart, that yes, it is time to have this conversation with him again. And hey, why not have it in front of 500 people? So welcome. <laughs> This is a conversation I've been having with Jesus for over 10 years. And in those years, I've succeeded maybe half the time to offer a full Sabbath day to God each week. About eight years ago, a mentor's response to my saying, I just need a vacation was, hmm, well, I wonder how you can find that rest now, which was very exasperating to me at the time. About five years ago, my sister, who works here on campus, gave me this pin for my birthday. <laughs> I think it's the hair. <laughs> and this past year, a spiritual director tried to convince me to divide my day into thirds, where two thirds of the day would be about work and class, and one third of the day would be about rest and maybe play, because apparently that leads to some kind of sustainable life. It's a moving target, haven't hit it yet. So I'm here to tell you that as much as I want it, for the most part, I fail pretty miserably at actually living a life that values rest. But in the last 10 years, as I've been having this conversation with God, um, I've learned a lot about some of the things that keep me from resting, that keep me from resting in him. And so here's what I've been pondering lately about the idea of rest. I think for me, the opposite of rest involves a deep fear. <laughs> And I think it is that fear that first keeps me from creating space in my schedule for rest. And it also keeps me from living an unhurried pace in the midst of a busy season or a busy schedule. But let me back up a bit. A about six years ago, I came across Isaiah 30, 15. And if you were in fives a few weeks ago, you heard me talk about it, but I think it is worth unpacking a bit more here now. Isaiah 30, 15 says, this is what the sovereign Lord says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. This is a prophecy that is issued to the kingdom of Judah as they were trying to figure out how to fend off the Assyrian army that was coming to attack them. The Assyrians had just attacked and overtaken the northern kingdom of Israel, and now they were making their way south to destroy and take over Judah. Hezekiah was king at the time, and his advisors were telling him that they faced certain destruction unless they could get help from their neighboring country, which was Egypt. They persuaded Hezekiah to send the best from their treasury with their most trusted emissaries to convince Egypt to come to their aid. The Lord, who through Isaiah had been begging the people to return to him, knows that in doing this, Hezekiah and the Israelites are going back to the country that had enslaved them centuries before. They had oppressed them. 
And here they were trying to get help from these people who'd murdered them and kept them enslaved. And yet again, the Lord seeks to draw the Israelites back to himself. In verses one and two of chapter 30 of Isaiah, uh, the Lord says, woe to the obstinate children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out plans that are not mine, forming an alliance, but not by my spirit, heaping sin upon sin, who go down to Egypt without consulting me, who look for help to Pharaoh's protection, to Egypt's shade for refuge. And then in verse 15, thus says the sovereign Lord, in repentance and rest is your salvation, in quietness and trust is your strength, but you would have none of it. I wondered for a while at what those two words, rest and repentance, were doing in that same line of this prophecy. What does rest have to do with repentance? And how is it that rest is what brings about salvation, especially in this context, for the kingdom of Judah, about to be attacked by Assyria. Now I understand that repentance, this literal turning to God that is involved in repentance is a necessary movement for our salvation, I get that. And I understand that this is what the Lord has desired of Israel um, throughout her whole rebellious history. But rest, what does that have to do with salvation? It turns out that rest in the Old Testament is a much larger concept than taking a break stopping work or putting down our tools, though that is part of it. More broadly speaking, rest has to do with a people's or a person's heart orientation towards God. God's Sabbath command of taking a rest once a week serves several purposes. One is indeed to glorify him, to set aside time to worship him. Another is to give our bodies and minds rest. It is a gift that the Lord commands us to take a day off. We are finite, we can't go forever with no breaks. Another is to remind ourselves that our lives, the food we eat, the places we live, these things don't ultimately rest in the work that we do. Our basic needs do rest in God's provision. But I do think that there's another layer to this. This command to rest has to do with our very identity, with how we understand ourselves in relation to God. You see, I think for myself, I'm actually addicted to being busy. Being busy seems to carry with it a sense of importance. Um, I think I've kind of bought into this cultural idea that productivity is of the utmost importance and being busy means that I am productive. And in fact, doing and producing for the kingdom of God are highly valued here at Biola, in the Christian college I went to in Western Pennsylvania, and I think in most of American Christianity. When I was in college, I read this book called The Prayer of Jabez, and it was a book that was going like wildfire through the Christian community. A great story of um, an Old Testament character named Jabez who asked that God would expand his territory. And so we were encouraged to ask the Lord to expand our borders for his kingdom. And this is a marvelous and God-honoring prayer, but I took it to mean that I needed to do more, say yes to more, get involved in more, and be very busy and very productive so that God could be glorified. And so that he would be pleased with me. So that I wouldn't disappoint him. Or somehow not live up to my potential. And so I felt guilty when I tried to take time to rest. Whether that meant spending time with God or just taking time to chill, watch a movie. Or even now join my roommate when she turns on Dance Dance Revolution in the living room or parenthood but I don't think that guilt is actually from God. Being busy also covers up parts of myself I don't like. When I feel insecure about something, I tend to work harder and longer to make myself feel better. Working more, volunteering for things, these, these are easily my drug of choice when I don't feel good about myself. When people ask me to do things, I feel needed and wanted. I feel valuable. And so I have a really hard time saying no. Instead, I say yes, because I'm afraid of not being needed and wanted. And I'm afraid of disappointing them, and I want to feel good about myself. And so as my schedule gets more and more full, because I keep saying yes, then I work harder and longer and harder and longer. Is any of this the same for you? Does the fear of insignificance or not being seen as worthy or of disappointing people 
drive you to produce more or to do more? Or does fear manifest itself in different ways for you that still lead to this life of kind of stress and anxiety and busyness? Maybe fear leads you to put off a project because it's overwhelming. And then it hangs over your head and you get totally stressed out the night before it's due. Or maybe fear of what's going on in deeper parts of your heart keep you going back to all night Call of Duty or Halo tournaments because that's where you feel successful and valued. Or maybe fear of not being seen or FOMO, fear of missing out, drives you to be the funny, entertaining one in social media. And so you, to make sure that you don't miss out on anything that's going on, you're constantly Facebooking or Instagramming or tweeting or pinning all the things. <laughs> I've also pinned all the things. No wonder we're so busy. So I do think that fear of missing out, of not being enough, fear of being a disappointment, fear of failure, fear of so many things has the potential to drive us into overuse of these otherwise good things. I love my Pinterest boards. But I think sometimes these can contribute to our sense of being busy and overwhelmed. The Sabbath command of rest, when I'm able to engage in it, abruptly reminds me that work and being busy cannot be the solution to my insecurity. That production cannot solve my need to feel needed or wanted. And that doing more or being more cannot relieve me of my doubt over my value. It reminds me that these deep needs can only be filled by trusting what the Lord says to be true of me. And when I can sink into what the Lord says to be true of me, when I can believe that more deeply, that's when I can experience rest. And by the way, trusting in this, trusting in these truths about myself, that I'm beloved, that I'm forgiven, that I'm valued, it's very hard to hold on to these things. And I think it's gonna take me the rest of my life to take them in deeply. But even as I say these things aloud, sometimes I think, and perhaps you're thinking, um, but this is a super busy time, and I can't just drop this assignment or not show up for that shift or not follow through on my responsibilities just so I can take a break and engage in some kind of Sabbath rest or um, even, even spend time with God, and I feel guilty about not spending time with God, but I have so much going on. And not only that, but these things affect my future, my potential jobs. I can't just stop doing them. And you're right. There are times in our lives, there are busy seasons, um, and for most of us, this might be one of them. And so while we can examine what is behind our busyness, what drives us, why we have a hard time saying no, or why we procrastinate or feel guilty when we try to take a break, it is worth also taking a look at how to rest in the midst of being super busy. In keeping with this Old Testament idea of rest, as being more than just pausing from work, Richard Foster writes, rest is not inactivity, it is dependent activity. This Old Testament truth sheds a great deal of light on the invitation from God to Judah in Isaiah 30 verse 15. In repentance and rest, dependent activity is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. Rest involves dependence on God. It is a dependence that the Israelites struggled with all through the Old Testament. God didn't always seem to be around, so they began to rely on other gods or other things to save them, as they did here in going to Egypt for help. Rest and trusting dependence do seem to go hand in hand, because they acknowledge that we can't do this on our own. Rest is a dependence that acknowledges our finiteness, that we can't do it all, or be it all for everyone. Rest is a dependence that begins to take in the truth that God's presence with us is enough and that our desire for dependence on God is enough for him too. So while God has given me many gifts and he's given me many opportunities to use my talents and resources through my job, through volunteering, through taking classes, through my roles as a friend, as a coworker, as a family member, as in the Associate Dean of Spiritual Development, 
While he's used all of these things in tremendous ways for his kingdom, the truth is that I am not these things. I am not my work. I am not my volunteering. I'm not my grades. I am not my roles as my as a friend or as a colleague or family member or as a team member in spiritual development. I am a finite creation. I am a child of God, and that is the only place that I can find rest. And when my heart is at rest in a process of receiving these truths, it's easier for me to ask him, Lord, what is your will? And then to say no to somebody because maybe my identity doesn't actually rest in what they think of me and because God can certainly fill some of those needs with someone else. When my heart is at rest with, with God in a process, a process of receiving these truths, it's easier for me to take a break from my work. I can feel less guilty about taking a night off to watch TV or taking time out to laugh with a friend. In fact, these are the kind of breaks that God delights in for us. He made us finite, he knows we need them. When my heart is at rest with God in a process of receiving these truths, then even in this very busy season, I can live in a more unhurried pace because my value doesn't depend on my performance. I become more okay with my failures to get my homework done on time or the missed crucial detail for that meeting. For most of us in this room, this is a really busy season. It's a lot harder to schedule in time for rest, although I do hope you're getting enough sleep and eating right. But it is in the most busy of times that we can actually practice dependent activity on God. And this is what can bring us a deep sense of rest as our hearts are aligned with his. And notice I do say practice because this is a process. It takes time. It's something I've been working on for more than 10 years and I still fail at it regularly, but God is merciful. Isaiah in chapter 30 continues his prophecy in verse 18 saying, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He will rise up to show you compassion. So I'd like to share a prayer with you that I've been praying off and on for over, really over the last year, that has been really helpful for me in this process of dependent activity on God, this process of rest. It's a prayer you could spend a lot of time on, but that means you'd have to add it to your to-do list. So I'd actually recommend that you maybe think about it on your way to class or when you're taking a shower in the morning or driving here to campus. The prayer is simply admitting that you're finite, that you are finite before the Lord. And then it is acknowledging your true identity in Christ. So the first part of the prayer is really this. God, I am a finite creature. I can't do it all. And I can't do anything without you. Forgive me for trying. The second part is, thank you, Lord. Thank you that I am yours. And that you say these things of me, that these things are true. That I am forgiven, that I am adopted, chosen by God. I belong to you. I'm beloved by you. And you know, sometimes it's hard to believe these things. So you might add, Lord, I... I do believe these things, but help me in my unbelief. And finally, the prayer involves simply taking a moment to be still. To be still in the truths that God loves you, is with you, is within you, and that you are God's new creation. So the next 10 minutes are gonna be yours. To sit in silence with the Lord, to go over the things that may be popping up in your mind right now, all the things that you have to do the sense of being busy and of needing rest. And our hope is that this time is a gift of rest for you. The slides are gonna play over the next 10 minutes, maybe three to four minutes a slide walking through this prayer. And in these 10 minutes as you sit silently with God and talk with him about rest and busyness in your life, that you might get distracted and that's okay. Don't be discouraged by distractions. Just kind of take hold of them and say, oh look, Lord, I'm distracted again. And then focus, it's good. <laughs> Might happen 50 times in the next 10 minutes, that's okay. The Lord is delighted to be with you even in those distractions. So let's pray to start off our 10 minutes of rest together. Lord, we are finite creatures and we are your children. May these truths bring us toward 
your true rest. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.